First up is Jason listening in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Jason's listening on the web. Hi, Jason. Hi, Hank. I was wondering why somebody would want to go to heaven and be around God who was torturing other people for eternity. Well, God doesn't torture uh, other people for all eternity. There's nothing in the whole of Scripture, uh, nor in a, uh, a biblical worldview, nor in the teachings of the early church fathers, that supposes that uh, God tortures people. People are tormented because they, they voluntarily have distanced themselves from God, which is a torment in itself, because we are created for fellowship with God, not to be distanced from God. But you have to remember that hell as well is God's great complement to the reality of human freedom and to the dignity of human choice. And uh, you can imagine if someone spent a lifetime voluntarily distancing themselves from God and then find themselves involuntarily dragged into his presence for all eternity. So the, the, the alternative to hell would be worse than hell itself. Uh, and, and that for a lot of reasons, it would rob human beings of freedom and dignity by forcing them into a heaven against their free choice. So just as people have free choice in this life, they're going to have free choice um, with respect that the life, uh, with respect to the life that is to come. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's certainly better than being tortured, but um, is it just going to be stuck in a dark place, like with no God is for eternity? Why not just let people die? It's just, or well, how about, um, yeah, well, that's a good question, actually. And, and I think the answer to that question is that non-existence is not better than any kind of existence. Uh, to affirm that nothing can be better than something, I think, is a gigantic category mistake. So God does not uh, arbitrarily wipe out the crowning jewels of his creation just because they have chosen to live apart from him. He continues to instead sustain them in existence, albeit uh, away from his, his goodness and his grace, because that is precisely what they want. So God gives people what they want. Same thing in this life. I mean, if someone decides that they do not want to have a relationship with God, God doesn't force that relationship on them. You know, for love to be meaningful, it has to be voluntary. It cannot be coerced. Right. I was under the impression that if you don't believe uh, in the gospel message that you go to hell and you're tortured uh, forever. So well, certainly you've given me a different perspective on it. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm glad you called, Jason. And if you have any further questions, be happy to, uh, to answer them for you. Okay. Thanks, Hank. Have a good one. It, you too. And, uh, you know, I, uh, as I said... Without choice, love would be rendered meaningless. Uh, I've mentioned many times on this broadcast that God is neither a cosmic rapist who forces his love on people, nor is he a cosmic puppeteer who forces people to love him. Instead, God, the very personification of love, grants us freedom of choice. And that freedom, of course, will then provide a persuasive polemic for the existence of hell. And, you know, common sense as well, I think, is a powerful argument in this regard. It dictates that there has to be a hell, because without a hell, the wrongs of Hitler's Holocaust will never be righted. And justice would certainly be impugned if after slaughtering six million Jews, maybe 13 million people in all, maybe much, much more, that Hitler merely dies in the arms of his mistress with no eternal consequences. And as I've said, the, uh, the ancients knew better than to think such a thing. Common sense uh, told Abraham that the judge of the earth would do right. And surely there would be no real justice were there no place of punishment for the demented souls of Stalin and Hitler, people who initiated the merciless slaughter of multiple millions of uh, multiplied millions of people. 
So God's justice demands that there is a hell. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's also important to realize that common sense in and of itself dictates that without hell, there's no need for a savior. I don't think a whole lot needs to be said about the absurdity of suggesting that the Creator would suffer more than the cumulative sufferings of all of humankind if there is no hell to save us from. Without hell, there's no need for salvation. Without salvation, there's no need for sacrifice. And without sacrifice, there's no need for a Savior. So as much as we may wish to think that all will be saved, common sense precludes the possibility.